on the uh, now infamous Green Shag. And uh, we're doing something that I've never done uh, before, thanks to Reverb, is uh, we're setting up uh, two different rigs. We're, we're, we're setting up a, a Hendrix-inspired rig with the real stuff, vintage Vox Wah, a Tycho Bray, Octavia, a uh, original fuzz face from 1970, and a, and a, and a real Univibe. And uh, a, a mint condition, well, this is part of a set of two stacks, but this is just the half stack because, again, we're in my living room. And, and I'd like to hear uh, people uh, post this video. Uh, this is a 1969 Super Lee that I bought from the original owner who went and saw Hendrix at Woodstock in 1969 in August and ordered them from, uh, I believe, Westbury Music. And they were delivered in November of 69. It's a Super Trem 100 watt and a Super Lead 100 watt. This is the Super Lead 100 watt. Um, and the guy, uh, I went to his house, and um, he, he had one of those Italian bottles of wine and, and was claiming that Eddie Van Halen stole all his riffs. It was one of those crazy guitar stories, but I got the amps. Anyway, so here we go. And this guitar is a 1969 maple cap in blonde, Hendrix's Olympic white, same damn thing. So, like this, this is a thirty-five to forty-five thousand dollar guitar. Univibes, I was buying them as a kid for four hundred bucks. Now they're probably at a zero. Fuzz faces, I think they're about two thousand dollars. And if uh, you know, if you try one in the store, just say there's something wrong with it. All you gotta do is just press it on. That's 200 bucks off right there. Octavia, I don't know, 3,000 bucks, and a, and a Vox Wah, which is on loan, so it was free to me, uh, but for, for everybody else, they're probably 1,000 bucks. I don't know, but this is the chain. This is the band of Gypsies chain. And thank you, George Trips, for your expertise in putting this all together in, in, the, in the right order. So it's noisy, it's wild, and I'm by no means Jimi Hendrix, but we'll get we'll, we'll get to the we'll get the gist of it. So check it out, and it's gonna be loud as fuck. <laughs> play this loud in a thousand square foot ranch house on Campbell Ave in Utica, New York, and my parents didn't disown me. This is how I learned how to use it. So again, um, vintage gear comes with some vintage uh, quirks. And 
And, you know, no fuzz faces are created equal. So you have a silver one, you got the blue ones, you got the red ones. They're all different, and it depends on the temperature in the room, uh, too, because it's like a hot day, they'll sound differently. But we, we messed with this, and we got it pretty close. And also remember, the trick to Hendrix's tone is like he was never on 10 all the time. Here. And I'm going through the bright input, um, like Hendrix would, but he would daisy chain the stacks with curly cables. And we can go down that rabbit hole too, but I don't want to be electrocuted. So we're using modern cables and modern electrics so I can survive the day. So I'm going to pose the question, can we get a Squire Strat, a whole bunch of modern pedals, and a classic 30 made by Hartley Peavy? back in the 90s to sound like all of this. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and we're back. Um, this uh, is the uh, budget version of the Hendrix rig. All, all uh, Dunlop pedals, we have a Jimi Hendrix uh, Crybaby, uh, we have an Octavio, which is a, a copy of the, the Roger Mayer original Octavia. We use the Tycho Bray, which was a copy of the, the Roger Mayer, but they made those in the 70s, and it's old and expensive. A Jimi Hendrix Fuzz Face, which is basically the Woodstock one uh, with the white knobs, they do exist, a friend of mine has one. And a Univibe MXR, you know, a Univibe. And uh, this is a, a, a Squire Stratocaster, big headstock, white, still got the taggers on it. Um, this is available at Norm's Rare Guitars for $319. I mean, if you ask nice, they'll probably take 20 bucks off. So $300 guitar and a $400, uh, I know this because I paid it, PV Classic 30, which is uh, a great amp. Now, perceptually, a 100 watt Super Lead is gonna be louder, but the sound man at the gig is gonna like you much better with the Classic 30. You'd be kicked out of the venue and told not to come back. And your career would be over if you use that. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> Percentage basis, I think if you needed to get the Hendrix vibe and again, also playing in the style of Jimi Hendrix, um, you know, it helps when you play in the style of, of, of Jimi Hendrix. I think, you know, we're about 85 to 90 percent um, at a $1,500, um, you know, a price point uh, versus something that's very, very expensive and very, very loud. You take this rig into the studio, you take this into any club or any, any, any venue, put a mic in front of it, and, and you know, you're, you're, you know, band of gypsies. And that was the point of the exercise is to see, you know, can you do it on a, on a, on a, on a budget instrument? And there's no such thing as a, a bad guitar or a bad amp or a bad pedal or a bad cable. Maybe the cable's bad, but it doesn't matter. It's just, it's how you drive it. And, um, you know, if you just 
kind of learn the techniques and how he and how he did it, and you know. And you know, again, it's a three hundred dollars Squire Strat that just happens to look like the Woodstock guitar. I'll flip it over, you know, buy a left-handed one, and it's still got the tagger on it. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Hendrix uh, relied a lot on the neck pickup. I mean, he would use the middle pickup, he would use the lead pickup, but especially when you're dealing with Octavia, they don't really track. Um, if you notice, like, with an Octavia, it's like, it, 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 if you don't roll the volume down a little bit and, and pick closer to the neck and pick lightly, it'll start tracking much better. And if you pick too hard, it'll, it'll, just, it'll just sound like a fuzz box. Now conversely with the... So, you know, I mean, I learned that when I, when I got my first uh, Oct Octavia kind of thing. I was like, man, this thing doesn't work. And somebody told me like, oh, you gotta pick, on the neck pickup, you gotta pick real light. Almost like you're doing like Lenny Bro harmonics. And I'm like, oh, it tracks instantly. So it's, uh, it's a quirk with the pedal, but it's a cool sounding pedal. And, you know, fuzz faces, again, you know, like I, I like them, like you can use them as a weapon if you hit, hit the treble. <laughs> So like on both rigs, I'm starting with a somewhat overdriven signal. It's not straight clean, you know, um, because I just like it that way. And like, you know, you can use the volume and get some dynamics, but you also can solo with this. and it's 1500 bucks or less. That's the, that was the point of the exercise today. And I've always wanted to do this, by the way, um, because it, it, it is proof that it doesn't take a million dollars. And uh, this is coming from the King Corksniffer himself. Mm -hmm.